Tom asks, why do you seem to avoid commenting on the possibility of a rapture, even though a large percentage of evangelicals do consider that possibility? There are several possible references to a rapture in the Old Testament. Well, I don't, I don't believe that there's any reference to a rapture in the Old Testament. He's probably talking about Elijah getting taken up with the horses. That is, that is light years away from what a rapture doctrine teaches. So the reason I don't I don't comment on the rapture is because I don't care a whit about it. Zero. I have no interest in it at all. So we don't we don't do theology on the podcast by virtue of a popularity contest. That oh this is a popular topic so let's talk about it. If it bores me, I'm not going to talk about it. And the rapture does bore me. And and again, the reason is is because it has it suffers from an inherent problem an inherent methodological problem that it can't shake and it can't get away from. And again, you could, you could Google drmsh.com splitter and joiner, and you will find the article where I lay this out, but I'll give it to you in, in real quick terms. Everywhere else, the propensity of the preponderance of evangelicals, the large percentage of evangelicals, and it would be even larger for this, for what I'm going to say here, when they read through the Gospels and they see the Gospels disagreeing on details, which happens all the time in terms of what the Gospels, the Synoptic Gospels now, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, they don't have all the same things in them. They, they include certain things where that, that another Gospel writer would exclude. Even when they do have the same things, sometimes the order of events is different. Even when the order of events isn't different, if you go to the Greek level, the words are different. The verb tenses are different. You know, the nouns, it, the, the word order is different. It, it's all, you know, there's dif difference, 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 difference. And, and, and we look at that and say, well, most of these are, are, most if not all of them, are cured by harmonizing. We take what Matthew says and we join it. We harmonize it with what Mark says or what Luke says. Or we start with Luke and then we go, to, go, to, go back to Matthew and we harmonize. We bring these things together. And you say, well, what's wrong with that? And I, my answer to that is there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, that's, 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 a, that's a good impulse to have. Here's the problem. If you believe in a pre-trib rapture, or really any rapture at all, but especially the pre-trib, if you believe in any rapture at all, that is not what you do in, in the Gospels when it comes to end times. Because there you're going you're gonna to be fixated on verses that talk about the Lord's return or his coming or you know, the, the Mount of Olives, you know, thing, and his foot touches the ground, and, you know, the use of Zechariah there. You're going you're gonna to be looking at, at all of what the New Testament says about the Lord's return. And you're going to be saying, well, we don't want to harmonize. We don't want to put these all together, because if we do that, there's no rapture. They all describe the same event. If we split them up and, and we, we say, oh, look, there's a difference here between the way Matthew words this and between and, and Mark or Paul. So now we, we, we're, we're going to keep those things separate. If we keep them separate, we have two events. We have the second coming and a rapture. So we create two piles. We create two categories. We're splitters. We, we arbitrarily decide to not harmonize the end time stuff so that we can have two events instead of one. That's the problem. There is no instruction there's nothing at the back of the Bible, you know, after you hit the maps, you know, and you, nobody uses the maps. They flip flip their Bible. Oh, here's the instruction page on what to do with, with, with prophecy or what to do with harmonization. No, there is no instruction page. My question to anyone who believes in a rapture is why do you harmonize everywhere else and everything else except for this? Why? If you can answer that, give me some basis for that, well, then I, I can feel warmer about the result. Now, I, I'm not going to say that, that this is an impossible position or an impossible strategy. What I am going to do is I'm going to point out the obvious. This is what you do. You split instead of join, when, when everywhere else you join. Why? So I don't really care if we have a large percentage of splitters in the evangelical world, because I don't, I don't judge the text by, by who's saying what and what position is popular. And since I don't have an answer to should I be a splitter or a joiner, I don't have a, a certain answer. I mean, I, I land on the, on the joining side because I, it feels more consistent to me. But I don't want my doctrine to be 
determined by my feelings either. So I don't take a position on it. I don't have an, a, a certain answer to this question. And, and questions that, that I know don't have certain answers. That I've, I've pursued this thing as, as long as I'm, I'm going to pursue it. I've used up enough of my life, you know, thinking about this question. And I know, I know there's no answer to this. I let it go. It bores me at that point, And I'm at that point with the rapture. 